before we get into a small group discussions in another 25 minutes at the core of spirituality at the core of vedanta according to all great seers all great philosophers not just the talkers but also the people who seen deeper than just words people would claim that at the core of the highest reality is just silence the highest reality is just silence the self is just silence why because everything else is noise everything else is noise our mind is filled with noise the world of our emotions of the intellect everything becomes a stumbling block uh, to experience the self why because the self itself is pure silence deafening silence pure silence and that's why krishna says in the gita the person who is able to see that silence even in action he calls it inaction even in action and dynamic action in inaction that person is 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 superior is self realized what that means is ashtavakra gita ends by saying nothing more can be said after this point i you either you either the penny drops or it doesn't drop <laughs> so at the core of vedanta is silence so that's why you see some of the greatest seers are seclude themselves and are silent or even if they are in the bright city lights they they are silent most of the time the kanchi mahapriya kanchi shankaracharya uh, chandrashekar saraswati very famous he lived till 100 he died probably 20 years ago so he 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 it seems barely spoke all his life he was leading a, a huge monastery uh, in kanchipuram is barely always silent self realized soul it does speak when when you can improve on silence it's a beautiful quote isn't it speak when you can improve on silence otherwise it's just noise 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 in our own head but but silence is may not deliver for us because even when we are silent when we sit in meditation it's all to practice silence silence of our own mind silence of our own mouth <laughs> silence of our own intellect of what is right what is wrong these are principles i live by these are values i live by this this is what i believe in ideologies this is what i believe in politics <laughs> that's intellect good versus bad however there is also pollution to the ultimate serene experience of the self the famous uh, philosopher emily dickinson said and i'm not quoting her word to word uh, because i'm rattling it off my head paraphrase she says there are many kinds of silence that we know as silent for example silence of a graveyard you know that eerie silence of a graveyard where uh, it's it seems to be deafening silence then there is silence of the deep blue ocean the in between the ocean where all sides are only water you seem to be at the center of the ocean wherever you are in the ocean that is the eerie silence of the ocean then there is silence of space imagine you are in somewhere in the universe just silence there's no rattling 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 it's silent but greater than all this she says greater than all of this is the silence of a soul turned inward silence of the graveyard silence of the ocean silence of space all that is deafening silence but greater than all that silence is the feeling of a person whose soul is turned inward meaning a person who has identified that he or she is from the beginning till the end nothing but the self in them it's like the river becomes silent when the river identifies with h2o that doesn't mean the river doesn't flow but the river is silent the river h2o doesn't change from river to clouds to snow to droplets condensation evaporation is all happening to the names and forms isn't it river becoming vapor is evaporation vapor becoming clouds and falling back down as rain is condensation however in and through all of this process the process the water doesn't experience anything h2o is h2o when it's the river when it's the clouds when it's the droplets when it's snow and that's the silence from an h2o's point of view it's all silent there's nothing happening it was is and will remain the h2o but assigning names and forms to it it enters samsara it is the river then it dies as the river it's get born as vapor it dies as the vapor gets born as snow 
It dies as the snow melts to become water, streams, tributaries. It dies as all of those individual identities and then becomes the river again. In and through all of this, it's the silence that's the H2O, the inaction of H2O behind the constant action of the names and forms of rivers and snow and droplets. And the action of all of this in the inaction of H2O is, is the state of the self. So at the highest level, friends, it's, it's only silence of removing the noise that's constantly in us that will allow us to uh, even fathom the, the, what we're talking about. However, however, silence is golden as they say, but silence, when we are silent, the self doesn't speak to us. When we are silent, we probably get back in a better mood. We probably are happier, but it doesn't allow us to reach the jackpot. Why? Because we carry a backlog of, it's difficult for us to be truly silent. Therefore, therefore, as we, our minds are not as subtle enough to just truly be silent. There are some people whose mind is so subtle that just saying, staying silent, a kind of Zen state, allows them to directly understand that Brahma Satyam Jagat Mithyam. However, it's difficult for us. Therefore, the less subtle way is nudges. What is nudges? giving some statement of facts very subtle still but it's still name it's still words so it reduces the subtlety but it's still subtle so that is statement of facts aphorisms mahavakyas mahavakyas don't talk about how to live or what to do or guidance it's not even like the bhagavad gita it's just mahavakyas there are four mahavakyas curated from different upanishads pragnana brahma the highest of all wisdom is Brahman alone. I am Atma Brahma. Similar is the Atman and Brahman. So the, the, the Atman in you and the Brahman outside is one and the same. Tat Tvam Asi. That which you are searching for there, that universal consciousness, that energy that runs the show. And Tvam, you are one and the same in your unadulterated form. And then the famous Aham Brahmasmi, the final realization is therefore, I am the Brahman. I am God. <laughs> but I am God doesn't come from I, Aditya, I, you, the God. It's like in, in Baghdad, 800 years ago, Sufi saint, Sufis are, Sufism is a very beautiful uh, form of uh, Islam. It's a, it's a, it's a most uh, inquiry, spiritual uh, uh, trajectory of Islam. And the Sufi saint in his meditative state realized, Aham Brahmasmi. And he got so excited that he ran out of his, wherever the building he was, into the marketplace in Baghdad, claiming, claiming, I am God, I am God, I am God. In one week he was beheaded. <laughs> Blasphemy. So, so, so I am God is not what others would understand when you say it. Now we understand when we say it, but because we're still subtle. If it's so simple to just hear these statements of facts, aphorisms, some for some people that opens their eye, that, that the penny drops there. But you need even more gross way to understand spirituality. So silence doesn't deliver. Aphorisms can be appreciated, but doesn't deliver. And then it comes to guidance. Guidance is subtler way to teach which is like the Gita, for example. We've been studying Gita for a year. Gita is, is little more gross than just nudge because it takes 18 chapters. If you see, the more and more gross it becomes, the lengthier the teaching is, the greater the words are, the more the noise, pollution. But to help us, 18 chapters is 18 chapters of noise when all it takes is silence. But it, there is a space, place in it depending on each of our starting points. So Gita's 18 chapters of guidance. It's not rules, it's not prescriptions, it's guidance. It's still subtle, but it's not as subtle as the other two. But even the Gita doesn't sometimes deliver in our daily life. That's why last week, 
three subgroups out of five, the question was, all this is fine, but how do I improve my life? How do I put this learning into practice? How do I make it consistent? Those were the questions, isn't it? So the Gita also is subtle. That it doesn't really transform us so simply because our noise is so much from the external world, from our own mind, from our own vasanas, from our own gunas. And therefore, an even more gross way than the Gita is speaking in analogies, metaphors, like kids, you know, you, you don't tell kids a tough concept. You use analogies, you use metaphors, similes. So that is the Upanishads. Upanishads is all about talking about the two birds in the tree, talking about um, stories, talking about where the Guru is telling the students Upanishads in the forest. Uh, stories to understand the self in them. But Upanishads are also stories are nice. We like to hear them. We like to take note of it. But is it really transforming us? No. The noise is too much in us. And therefore, go to Itihas. Itihas is even more gross, which is all about real life stories. Forget analogies are too subtle. So let's talk about Mahabharat, Ramayan, stories from the Puranas, stories of whether real people, unreal people doesn't matter, but stories for us. So arguing whether Rama existed, Krishna existed is a futile attempt. But the idea is they are stories for us because our mind is not subtle enough to understand Brahma Satyam, Jagat Mityam. So there you have archetype characters, Krishna, Arjuna, Rama, all those people. But sometimes that also is not useful. Look at how derailed and defunctional our mind is from a Vedantic point of view. That even this fourth level of grossness, silence, statement of facts, aphorisms, Mahavakyas, analogies, metaphors, now storytelling, that also doesn't work. We all know the Ramayana from our childhood. We all know Mahabharata. But yet we are where we are, isn't it? From a spiritual point of view. Not creating a sad picture of where we are. We are happy people in lives. No, no doubt about it. However, however, not sthitapragnya. We, we don't realize who we are in reality. As Vivekananda said, you are, you are the ocean upon which the Buddhas and Christs of the world are just waves that appear and disappear. You are that ocean. You are not a wave which looks back and says, Jesus lived before me, Buddha lived before me. You are that ocean upon which all of this appear and disappear. It doesn't speak to us. So even Itihas is not enough. Then you go to more gross. What will be more gross than storytelling? Rules. Do's and don'ts. <laughs> if stories don't deliver, we have to say, forget stories. Let's put a list of do's and don'ts. Do this, don't do this. You find you find that many religions are a list of do's and don'ts. Do this, dress like this, walk like this. They're not wrong per se. What I'm trying to establish is hierarchy here. So if you, if you look at Islam, for example, you may see it constrained. You may see it like it's just a list of do's and don'ts. Hinduism is more subtle. It's all in the ladder of subtlety, sir. Islam is a newer religion. And obviously, the state of art, state of people is, is so gross that you need rules and regulations. It's constraining. But that's what karma also says, isn't it? You cannot stray here and there, then you won't reach. Straight is the path, narrow is the road. And if you cannot download knowledge through just subtle ways, you have to have rules and don'ts. Don't go left, don't go right, go straight. So that's 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 just rules, do's and don'ts. But sometimes even rules, prescribed path, Upanishadic rules don't, kar karmic rules don't speak to us. And then finally we need fear and guilt. God fearing. What is God fearing? <laughs> what is God fearing? But you need fear. If you don't do this, mm, one God will give you. If you don't do this, you'll go to hell. Then it speaks to us. Ah, this is what, this is the level of subtlety we are in. If I don't do this, I'll go to eternal hell. My skin will be peeled and I'll be roasted and I'll be burnt alive. And then I'll be sent to hell again. And now I'm afraid. Now let me 
be honest. Now let me be loving in this world. If I don't donate to poor people, I'll go to hell. <laughs> so that's the level of grossness that sometimes speaks to us. And sometimes that also doesn't speak to us. So in the hierarchy, if you see, all of this has a place. All of this has a place. Prescriptive religions have a place for a grosser mind. Nudging religions, way of life religions have a place. But all of this is pollution. Any word, even the word self is a pollution of the self. It's not the self. It's just words describing to use the self. So when you get there at the highest level, it's only silence that can deliver because you need to silence the noise of the mind, noise of ourselves, silence the extrovertedness in terms of attachment to dependencies. And then in that silence, the H2O is always silent in that analogy. That itself is an analogy. <laughs> so, so when we come to application of learning, why, how do we learn? How do we put some of this in practice? There's nothing wrong in any part of this hierarchy because our starting point is different. You may want, some people may say it's discipline, discipline. We need do's and don'ts of everyday life because it's not natural. Left to myself, I, I'm totally indisciplined. So I need a stick. That's also true. Some people may say, I want to, I'm in a stage where I just want to renounce and just be silent. That's also true. Some people may say, I want to read the book. That's also true. So there is no one right way there. Let me pause. Any questions, anybody? I see a raised hand.